my name is Francesca Marano, and I'm the WordPress core team lead at Yoast, where we believe SEO is for everyone. Uh, we also believe in open source. We strongly believe in giving back to the community. And in our view, that means giving back to the place we live in together. So that's what my team does. We contribute full time to WordPress.org, the open source uh, project. And in case you're not familiar with our product, uh, we have an SEO plugin and other plugins always focused uh, on content and SEO. And you can visit yoast.com uh, where you can read all about our plugins and uh, we work with different uh, communities and platforms, not just WordPress, but also Magen Magento, Type 3, Neos and Drupal. So, I am an accidental open source contributor. Uh, my path uh, to open source was just kind of happened randomly. Uh, I was born into tech. Uh, my parents had started programming in the late 60s. So I grew up around computers uh, and uh, programming and, driving, uh, and drawing on perforated cards and all that kind of stuff. But I never wanted to pursue a career in programming because maybe because in my mind, uh, everything that had to do with that word was large mainframes for banks and insurances. And that was not really my thing. And then in 20, uh, my son was born in 2006. So around 2008, I stumbled upon WordPress.org uh, when I wanted to create my mommy blog. Uh, I thought that as a new mom, of course, as you do, I needed to knit all of my kid clothes and prepare all the food from scratch. So the blog was a place to document that. Turns out my son hated wool and I am really not much of a cook. <laughs> so um, soon after I started it, I decided that it was a lot more interesting to tweak and play with the platform than really writing about the latest uh, fruit smoothie I gave him. And uh, a few years before, um, I uh, almost finished a degree in uh, arts and multimedia. So with the, that technical knowledge, that programming knowledge, I started uh, tinkering with my website. And very surprisingly, people started asking me to create similar uh, blogs and websites for them. So that's how my business started. Um, so I loved WordPress. I loved the freedom that it allowed me. And I kept up with uh, what was going on uh, in terms of the software to be ready to learn more and to give a better um, service to my customers. But I never thought about contributing because uh, to WordPress or open source in general, because again, in my mind, development is major mainframes for a large organization. So uh, I always thought that that's what open source needed, PHP developers, uh, right? Mm, turns out I was wrong. <laughs> so let's have a quick look at my path. I'm not super fond of talking about me, but in, in this specific uh, case, it's really about how I went from stumbling upon a project by writing recipes for kids to uh, leading a team of developers that work on that. So I did my first contribution without knowing it. Uh, a client of mine needed a WordPress plugin and uh, I translated it. So I thought, well, I did the work. So I just sent the Mo and Po files to the developers because the translations was done. So why not? They could you know, just use it if they wanted to. In 2015, I got to know a few WordPress contributor at a non-WordPress related event. And they explained to me that actually there was an organized way to help the project in many different ways and not only development. So I first started translating WordPress into Italian, which is my language. And then I moved into community, uh, which is the community team of the WordPress.org project is the, uh, is the team that oversees and supports all official WordPress events around the world and now online. 
In 2017, I was hired by SiteGround, who's also a sponsor here today, and it's, um, it's the largest independent uh, managed WordPress hosting company in the world, and I joined as the WordPress community manager. So joining a company that supports its employees in open source contribution allowed me to dedicate more time to WordPress. Last year, in August 2019, I became involved with the core team, um, and I had the immense pleasure and honor to be the release coordinator, so one of the co-leads of WordPress 5.3 and 5.4, uh, and I stuck around, started working uh, with the core team in a project management facility, if you want. Uh, and then at the beginning of October, uh, so very, very recently, I joined Yoast. Uh, Yoast is based in the Netherlands, and it's a company that always supported WordPress in many different ways. And many employees of the company and the founder himself have been contributing to it for years. Uh, we, were think, we were talking about this a few days ago, and the Yoast demand, not the company, has basically been part of over 20, uh, 20 uh, WordPress releases. So the company and the people at the company are very involved. And this summer, they decided uh, to put together a formal team of uh, full-time contributors, and I was asked uh, to lead it. So my work for the rest uh, of this year uh, will be mostly behind the scenes. It's where I like to be and where I'm comfortable uh, with my team. So we can become more effective and helpful in this uh, path of contribution. And also in mentoring other contributors that are starting uh, in WordPress night, right now, or they started contributing. Uh, with a focus on women that joined the project or have become more active recently uh, in the project because the next major release of WordPress, WordPress 5.6, who will be out in December, is going to be uh, led by a team of women. And I think it's kind of a first in open source. So I'm, uh, I'm very lucky because I get to work with all these amazing women that have uh, great ideas and bring a whole new perspective to the table. So let's, uh, that was about me and it was a little bit about my background. So you know why I'm here today talking about this. So let's dive into open source contribution and why I think it's okay to be selfish. So this booklet, it's really, really small, uh, The Cathedral and the Bazaar by Eric S. Raymond is still after almost 30 years a must read for everyone working inside open source and uh, i don't know if you have read it this would be the time at an in-person event where i would ask you if you read it but now i cannot see your reply but we can discuss it uh, afterwards so if you haven't read it i really recommend you do so as you see it's very short and sprint is very large thankfully because i'm becoming short-sighted and uh, it's full of wisdom and it's full of uh, things that are still very relevant um a lot of years later um i got this printed on demand uh because the original uh, cannot be purchased anymore uh but you can also uh, check it online so it's uh, very convenient. So it's divided in lessons and I want to focus on two especially. So the lesson one is probably the most known uh, <laughs> sentence from the book um, and it's quite the starting point for uh, nearly every contributor I know. So every good work of software starts by scratching a developer's each. Uh, I would like to say not only a developer's each, of course, the book is written by a developer uh, point of view, but I think every contribution really starts by us as contributors scratching our own each that can be anything. So you need to start somewhere, right? And starting from something that you need a solution for is a great idea. It might be something that puzzles you or something that you need to solve to move forward with your own project. Or maybe you want to learn about something and you can learn by doing. And lesson number 18 uh, is corollary to the first one. To solve an interesting problem, start by finding a problem that is interesting to you. So what is your interest? So basically, these two lessons 
make it clear that you are the master of your own contributor destiny. And you should pick projects that are interesting for you and you're excited about fixing and diving into. So yes, be selfish and don't be sorry about it. If you pick something you use daily, uh, it will be easier to get started. You can report a bug. If you find something unusual, you can fix a bug. And then if you fix it for yourself, why not giving it back to the project? Or maybe you attended an online event like this one and you decided that uh, it would be great to become an organizer of the next edition. This is what my background is about. You can see work in Pitalia. Uh, it's a WordPress event that was held uh, this weekend and I was one of the organizers and I've been uh, volunteering to organize WordCamps in Torino, my hometown, for years now. And also don't worry about making small changes because I started by translating uh, every instance I could find of the names of the days of the week <laughs> from English to Italian. It might sound meaningless, but those words needed to be translated. They were still in English and I had the time to do it, so I did it. And then I moved on to more complex translations and then I also moved teams, but I needed that simple thing, that easy win to get me started and get me motivated. Uh, and also don't worry, if you're not into the next step, it's fine. Do what you want because it's about you. But if you do enjoy it, uh, the next step might be getting involved more actively and continuously with your project of choice. Uh, that's usually the point where you realize what an impact doing small changes have in this larger <laughs> project and that usually there are some form of uh, um, coordinated communications so people can work together on the same project. So in WordPress, for example, uh, there are blogs for the different teams. Uh, we use Slack for communications and uh, Track and GitHub uh, for development and bug tracking. So you can start attending chats or calls if this specific project has them. And even as a listener uh, at first, and then when you feel ready <laughs> to, to say your piece or when something is important enough for you to say your piece, then that's when you start connect with others. And uh, don't forget to be polite. <laughs> and I know it might sound a bit condescending of me to say so, since um, I assume we're all adults here, but this will make it so much easier for you uh, to, to go into your path. And also, um, you always have to remember that usually an open source project, no matter how large or small it is, it's made of people from all over the world, the different cultures, different countries, different languages. So, you know, you never know uh, how they can interpret what you say. So go into it with an open mind and a listening and learning mode usually helps. So, on the way, on this path, you will probably learn a lot of things. For example, you lose tools that maybe you've never heard of on your day job, uh, or you'll start using procedures and processes that you've never heard of before. For example, I was introduced to the idea of stand-ups and check-ins and all these kind of things and Slack and whatever uh, when I started working in the WordPress project. English is not my first language, in fact, it's my third language. And uh, I improved my English a lot over the years, so thanks to communicating with other WordPress contributors. Um, and, you know, that helped me grow as a person and as a professional. And also I learned uh, probably the two most useful skills I learned are conflict resolution and project management. Uh, I became more assertive and patient along the way, and I learned how to delegate and mentor. And honestly, this has helped me a lot in my day-to-day -day life, not just in being a WordPress contributor. And the results are tangible. So for individuals, uh, you get new knowledge. Knowledge is very expensive today to acquire, even though the internet is free. So it's a great way to, to get to know new things from experts in the field. 
you make new connections. They can become business partnerships or friendships, and both are equally important in our lives. And you can spot new opportunities for your professional advancement. So these, for example, are the 18 teams that make WordPress, the platform, but also the community. If you go to make.wordpress.org, uh, you'll see all of them. And they represent an incredible variety of skills and knowledge. Uh, by contributing to them, you can learn anything from putting together a lesson plan for training WordPress users in the training team, to experiment with the latest technologies in core or plugins or themes, or you can improve your public speaking skills. You can lend a hand in uh, uh, translations. Uh, you can learn how to edit videos. There's really, really a lot to do and a lot to learn. And this is true also for companies. So by making WordPress better, if your company um, will uh, be involved in a project, so for example, by making WordPress better, the companies in the ecosystem can make their own product better uh, and make sure that the platform itself keeps improving. So it's a two-way uh, relationship. And you can have discussions with like-minded people from other companies and again, exchange knowledge, which is a very, uh, very precious um, uh, thing to have nowadays. And you can use it to train up your uh, employees, for example, on the platform by allowing them to work on it and provide support and guidance, for example. Uh, as soon as I joined Yoast, we had to put together a temporary team to tackle um, an urgent matter in WordPress. And uh, one of the people that was added to my team is a very, um, very expert React developer, but he didn't know much about WordPress as other people do in the same team. So we gave him kind of a crash course into WordPress. And in return, we got a bit of a crash course on React and how React is used on WordPress. So that was great. Now we have one more person that knows what WordPress is at Yoast. And the people that work on WordPress all the time know a little bit more about React. So it's a win-win. Uh, and finally, you can get also some recognition. Some uh, open source softwares, WordPress included, have uh, ways to highlight companies' uh, contributing efforts. Uh, for example, in WordPress, we have the Fight for the Future initiative, which encourages uh, uh, organizations to contribute 5% of their resources back to WordPress development. Matt Mullenweg, who's the, the project co-founder and uh, lead, proposed this as a benchmark uh, to maintain a kind of a golden ratio of contributors to users inside a project. So the idea is to give back at least 5% of your company resources to WordPress. And I'm very proud of this <laughs> because uh, even though uh, Yoast is a relatively small company in the ecosystem with a little bit over a hundred employees with other companies having well over a thousand people. We're the second largest contributor to WordPress in terms of how we're donated. And so this makes me incredibly proud. And this was one of the reasons why I joined the company as well. So I told you about being selfish. But when I started contributing, everyone was going on and on and on about being selfless. For me, the word selfless and selflessness are problematic, uh, mainly because I'm not an English native speaker. So they're also kind of hard for me to say. But that less at the end sounds like you're erasing yourself in the process but you're actually the biggest resource in this process uh, of contributing. So I prefer words like generosity or altruism. So this is where contributing to open source becomes about the others. And I see this in a lot of contributors. At first, we learn, we do, we attend, we have this appetite for doing it all. We have this need for doing it all and to learn and to give feedback and to get feedback. 
And then a lot of people move into the background and start helping others go through that first step of stepping up. And this is how you make sure uh, the project has new energies uh, so it doesn't die down uh, with people that have been doing this for a while and might be tired. So we go back to Eric Raymond and lesson five uh, that is both about being selfish and so when you lose interest in a program, you're being selfish. Your last duty is to hand it off to a competent successor. So if something doesn't interest you anymore, you give it away. But you're also helpful because you're thinking of who is coming after you and you're putting them in the best possible place to succeed. Here are some examples from my experience of how I was both selfish and generous in different contributions in my life, not only in WordPress. So I get, as I said, I get to mentor new contributors, which is incredibly rewarding. And I get to help people that want to start with public speaking. Other people before me helped me to get there and to get where I am. Uh, so I'm happy I can assist other people in their path. Uh, another example is seven years ago, I founded a very popular blog, again, by accident. My life is a series of um, very, very happy accidents, apparently. So I founded this quite popular blog for Italian female creative entrepreneurs. There was nothing like this in Italy seven years ago. And it's read by thousands of people. And still today, people tell me how useful that was when they started out. And last year, it became very clear that I couldn't spend more time on it. I didn't have more time to spend on it. So instead of letting it die a slow and painful death, um, I was able to hand it over to some great successor and that was possible because I was selfish when I created it and I was generous when I hand it over. I learned to delegate. I was one of these horrible people that uh, thinks that no one is doing enough, that I'm the only one working, I'm the only one doing stuff. And turned out I was actually the problem. I was doing too much and uh, I was holding everyone, including myself, to unsustainable uh, standards. So now I'm more selfish. I delegate. Instead of working 16 hours by myself, I work eight hours and I let someone else do the other eight hours. And the most selfish thing I do in life is document. So in case I lose interest, someone can take care of all these projects. And for me, documentation is actually the highest form of generosity in contribution, in my opinion. So after five years of solid contribution, I still think there is what's in it for me. It's a major drive to succeed in long term contributions. Knowing what you're getting back uh, is a major motivator. So, and it's not necessarily profit driven or about raising your own profile. So for example, it's the sense of accomplishment and pride that you feel when you make a change. I think it's still a big mood and answer. Uh, the worst my day is going, the more I turn to contributing to feel that I'm making a difference for millions of people or even just for one person, it actually doesn't matter. So that is my main what's in it for me, the accomplishment. Validation, why not? Positive feedback about our ideas is always great. Uh, I think recognition is also very important uh, and it comes in different forms. Uh, if you have kids, you might have used the rewards system uh, when they grew up, if they finish their task or stuff they like. And it's, a, it's an excellent system. After all, gamification processes are all about this. And finally, it will help you build your skills and put together a better CV in case you're looking for a job. I put this last because if this is your only motivator and your contribution is clearly only selfish, I am afraid that this will not work very well uh, because after observing hundreds of contributors and now uh, being also in a position to spot um, people, uh, I, I can tell you that 
it's clear when there's only the selfish part and not the generous part. So this is why you need both. So to sum it all up, uh, I would like to finish with a quote from a WordPress core committer, a former release lead and my partner in life who I happen to meet at a contributor day. So contributing is always a good idea. Uh, it could even help with your love life, who knows? So John Blackburn says, make it better, give it back. No matter what pushes you to make it better, give it back so others can enjoy it and probably make it even better. So that would be all from me. Uh, I try to keep this a bit short. So hopefully we have time to, to discuss this together. And uh, my name is Francesca, Francesca Marano. I'm the WordPress core team lead at Yoast. And uh, you can find me online. Now let's chat. Thank you so much, Francesca. Uh, it was a really inspiring talk. I really liked learning your story about where you started, <laughs> starting with the recipes and ending up becoming a full-time contributor. I think that that's every story is unique. And I think that it's, it's great to hear where that came from. Um, and I, I really do also empathize with your point around being selfish in your own interests. I think we studying open source and what really brings people back to continue to contribute it's because you're interested in it. This is generally happening with your own free time. And yes, there are ways that your company can sponsor you to work on projects, but fundamentally you're there because you want to be and you choose to be. Um, and when you're done or you're disinterested, it's time to disengage. So I think that that's really true to me in, in terms of the projects that I choose to work in to spend my free time in. Uh, and I think really what makes it makes this special um, because this is all things that we're all individually passionate about. So thank you so much. Um, it looks like we have a question coming up in the QA. Francesca, can you see the QA or do you want me to read it? No, you have to read it because I removed everything from my screen that okay. might be distracting. <laughs> this question is from Ali. When you want nothing more to be generous, how do you set good boundaries so you don't slip into selfishness? I had to burn out to set boundaries, which is something that I don't recommend. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but ultimately that, unfortunately, that's how I learned how to set my boundaries um, in open source because I uh, actually at the beginning of my career <laughs> as a contributor, when I was still freelancing, I took on a task that was definitely too big for me. And uh, I didn't ask for help. And uh, I didn't raise my hands and say, I cannot do it. So I think as always in life, <laughs> the answer is inside you. <laughs> and you are the only one that can really say, okay, what am I doing here? And is this healthy? Um, having friends, uh, that really care about you as a person inside an open source project, it's also very important because sometimes you get so caught up in what you're doing that you don't see that this is happening so uh, they can help. Uh, in terms of how being generous without being too selfish, was this the question? Well, Mayor, how you slip, how you set boundaries. Um, yeah, okay. So how you set boundaries is that, <laughs> don't burn out. Uh, have friends tell you when you're taking too much. Uh, but also, I, suddenly I thought about if we have a little bit more time, is also how not to become just selfish, <laughs> which is also something that I see happening sometimes. And um, that is also, again, um, if you can't recognize that that's happening to you. And I, I actually saw some very good people going down that path that, you know, suddenly it was all about them. And it was either they don't get understood or, you know, people don't listen and people don't do blah, 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 blah. And you get into this mood. Then if you're not too far deep into this <laughs> mode of, uh, thinking then uh, definitely pull back but uh, hopefully and again I think a mature and healthy open source project will 
uh, call you in, not call you out. They it will call you in um, to um, ultimately make it enjoyable for you. Because I think that with all the issues that I found myself um, either having to me mediate um, a conflict or being myself <laughs> the conflict, it was very important that someone pointed and said, okay, let's stop for a second. This is not working and how can we make it better together? Which is again, the base of open source. Uh, but it, it, it takes, it's trial and error. <laughs> it's really, really trial and error. And as peer programming is important <laughs> for developers, I think peer contributing is also very important. So someone will tell you, hey, stop, stop for a second and um, don't go overboard. Don't make it all about yourself or stop working 16 hours a day <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> Well, thank you, Ali, for the question. Thank you for the response, Francesca. Is there any more? We, we have another 13 minutes before the close of the session. So I'm happy to stick around. Um, Francesca yeah. has her, some of her handle and contact information here if you want to follow up with her offline. Oh, offline. <laughs> off, uh, off. Well, yeah. offline, unfortunately, I don't think we will be able to connect anytime soon, which is... Um, which has been a big change in my life. So before the pandemic, I used to travel for more than 50% of my time. Um, the, the most I traveled was probably in 2018 when I was out of my home for over 200 days. <laughs> and, um, and now it's all from my uh, bedroom in Torino, Italy. And it's a bit, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I miss being on the road and at the same time I like being home and doing these things on my PJs when they are at terrible <laughs> at times. <laughs> I think the latest I did something was midnight and it was great doing it from bed in my PJs with a background. <laughs> Well, I think, I, I hope that people aren't working ridiculous hours, but I think it is a little bit easier too when you never leave. And I, I think even Ali's earlier comment about being yeah. able to work things and home things kind of interspersed, but I also think that there's been a bit of blending in my home life and my personal life, especially yeah. as it relates to timing and schedules. Yeah, I was having this conversation today with one uh, one of the members of my team because um, he works a lot of hours and uh, I and I used to be that person. I used to be a workaholic. I I really used to work sixty hours a week minimum. When in Italy it's forty hours, so you know that was a lot of time more than I was supposed to. Um, and I was doing this also when I was working in a physical office, going home at 9, 10 p.m. with a taxi and stuff like that. So when I started working on my own, I, uh, this got terrible because there was no more boundaries between my life and my work because they all happened in the same space. And then when I joined the side room three years ago, one of the questions um, was, how much do you work? And I was like, what am I supposed to say here? And that I work 16 hours a day or that I want a good work-life balance? <laughs> so I, I just said it. I said, I work more than I want to work. And um, the CEO that was in, interviewing me said, good, because we don't want our people to burn out and work too many hours. <laughs> That's when I started, you know, also, obviously, having a paycheck is different than being a freelancer because when you're a freelancer, you don't know where your next meal is coming from, <laughs> basically. Um, so today I had this conversation with someone in my team who's where I was a few years ago, and I was like, we, you, I really needed to convince you that it's good at <laughs> 6 p.m. to just turn off your computer and do other stuff. 
Um, we, we actually have another question pop up yes. during our discussion, kind of related to this, this conversation about time management um, from an anonymous attendee. Maybe this is a bit off, but how do you convince your people at home that you find extra time in open source software and, and that's fun to you? So like how, I guess, I'm not entirely sure what the question is, but it sounds like how you would, um, how you get people to see that there could be joy and interest in participating in these things in your own time in your own home did I did I interpret that correctly please correct me if I'm wrong in the in the QA um so I see both the sides of this because my partner in life is also a workers contributor so um we talk about WordPress <laughs> way too much than we should <laughs> after our day is over but we enjoy this and that's actually how we met and that's what we enjoy doing also in our uh, free time my son is a bit of a different mind because when i would uh, when i led my uh, first release uh, most of the of the beta and release candidate and stuff like that happened at a time that coincides with uh, dinner time or bedtime in italy and you know at first it was really like Oh, that's exciting. My mom is doing this. And then towards the end, it was like, when is this going to be over? Because I want to have dinner without Slack pinging every five seconds. So <laughs> he's 14 years old, but on I told him exactly why I do it. I showed him the WordPress counter. So if you go to wordpress.org slash counter, I think you see how many people... Uh, how many installs of WordPress are active <laughs> right now. And I was like, I enjoy it because I do it with people that I like. And also because at this moment, 35 million people are using the software I'm working on. But it was good that it brought this up because I was like, you know what, you're right. So that's also helped me set boundaries. So for example, now only Wednesday nights are evenings where I have a chat that it's not compatible with European time and that's when I do it so show them I, I'm a big believer on show don't tell so show them why you enjoy doing this and maybe bring them over my son has come with me to countless uh, events in Italy and also abroad he got swag so he was super excited and when it really got too much for him it was like I get your frustration, but money right now needs to help millions of people. And then we can go and read and do something. So again, it's really much about boundaries and um, it's a negotiation. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I wish that I could negotiate with my cats, but they, they don't really follow the same logic. They're just I have one crying outside my door now because he doesn't understand that I'm home, but I'm not allowing us to share the same space. So Cats there are different things. Uh, our cat is known to commit things that uh, <laughs> then need to be reverted. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Where are we yeah. all? Are, so I think I've, I've personally been enjoying the windows into people's personal lives and I, I don't want to say that i'm snooping but i think it's it is about again i think you, you said something very poignant which is using the community and the friendships in the community to help you balance your efforts in it and reminding that this is it is a job after all and even if this is personal interest and time but it shouldn't be all consuming and you shouldn't let yourself get burnt out and you you need to have those relationships and people that you trust in in these forums and i think especially now that we don't have the opportunity to meet an engaged person it's harder to build those personal relationships and yeah. trusting relationships and for me i think it's been really humanizing when someone's pet completely disrupts the meeting or their child runs through the background and takes their time away. But it's it's little pieces like that that remind us that these are not just talking productive heads, but we all have lives and personal lives outside of this space. And I think it, it helps to provide just a little bit more empathy and connection that we're not able to get by not being there in person. So I think I, I've been, 
I've been enjoying that aspect of it. Maybe I just just need the contact in any form that yeah. it takes. So even if it's your cat running across the screen, I'm I'm very like that lifts my mood. Yeah. <laughs> and then I know a little bit about more about you and your life, even if you don't want to share more beyond that. I think yeah. that's possible. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We miss so much by not uh, meeting in person. So it's really time for everyone to step up and uh, find new ways to connect. I, One thing that I, I uh, really like, um, and I want to try it in core, but I don't know yet how, because it's a, it's a really big team. Uh, the, the WordPress design team does a show and tell on Zoom. Uh, I don't know if every week or every two weeks and you know sometimes it's two people sometimes it's 20 people and it's great because it's it's it, it, we have to be honest with ourselves this is our reality now for the time being so we might as well we we, we are over the shock we are over the oh, this is horrible. And now we really have to find new ways to, to continue this kind of uh, conversations and connections and friendships and all this kind of things. So we'll see. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Um, we have three minutes left on the clock. Well, now two. Um, we've had a couple of thank yous. I, I think I Highly recommend that you, Francesca, once you close out of your talk, you read through some of the chats just because I think they're, you have some yes. <laughs> the panelists and make sure you feel, sorry, participants, you feel connected that people were engaged yeah. and interested. I think, well, it sounds like a lot of people have heard about that book, not a lot, but some um, have heard about that book. So I think that there, there was it's, definitely some connection there. I think a lot of people, and well, by a lot of people, I mean me, <laughs> thought that this was like you know a 600 pages book like you started this book like you start the hobbit or something but it's not <laughs> if you check it out online it's actually a very long html page <laughs> and in the print format in that i got printed on demand is like 78 79 pages with the epilogue about how Netscape embraced the bazaar, which is incredible because I don't know if you remember Netscape. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I worked a lot on making websites uh, compatible with Netscape <laughs> in 98. <laughs> I ever used. It's like middle school. Yeah, it was the uh, it was my the first browser I made the website for, and it was an endless. Um, does this work with Netscape? Does this work with Internet Explorer? And web standards were just at the beginning, and actually that's how I never graduated because. Um, I was taking this degree in, in the early 2000s and something about art and multimedia. And I stumbled upon uh, CSS Garden and Jeffrey Zeldman and his book about the web standards. So I brought it to the university and my human interaction teacher didn't have never heard of Jeffrey Zeldman. So I was like, I'm out. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Uh, well, with that, we're we're at time, so we can close the session now. I was so yes. happy you. Thank you for your time, Francesca. Thank you for all the participants that that voiced their opinions, thoughts, reactions, and questions through the Zoom platform. So appreciate feeling connected and engaged. Um, thank you so much. We will be opening this again in the next ten minutes for our next session, which begins at twelve thirty. Eastern time. So we hope to see you again um, and have a great rest of your day. Ciao.